Uh, I can't even say it without being thrilled to be here. I was voting for the first female president. One Rockville woman tells us she's thrilled to be able to vote in this election. I was born June 2nd, 1918. I already voted. I voted for Hillary Clinton. In October, I posted a picture of my grandmother with this caption. Estelle L. Schultz, who was born two years before women had the right to vote, marked her absentee ballot for the first female president, Hillary Clinton. So I saw this photo on Facebook one day, and it was this amazing glowing picture of this woman holding up a ballot with a big smile on her face. And I started thinking there must be a lot of other women in that age group, women over 96 years old, who were thrilled and excited to be voting for Hillary Clinton. So we decided to start collecting their pictures. We created a website, we called it iWaited96years.com. Eventually it got press, it got picked up by BuzzFeed, and eventually dozens of women sent in their photos and quotes. By election day, we had 186 women. And the day of the election, these submissions kept coming. We kept hearing from more and more women, really up until the moment the polls closed. We were getting pictures of women at the polls voting for Hillary Clinton. And then the election results came in. Well, you mean Trump is, is beating her? No, that just might be in one state. There's going to be a lot of sad faces. The campaign, oh, yeah. Mine's going to be one of them. So a couple of days after the election, a couple of friends came to Sarah and me and said, why don't you go back to those women who had such wisdom and ask them, how can the country go forward? What should we do now? What's your advice? We, we really learned a lot from their stories and it gave us comfort. It gave us comfort to learn how the country had had tough times in the past. I mean, we knew that from the history books, but learning about it from these women who experienced it gave us new perspective. I, I remember one of the first responses we got was from a woman who talked about the day John F. Kennedy was assassinated and how devastating that was and how no one could imagine how the country could survive or how the country could go on after such a great tragedy. And yet the country went on. We're still here. Yeah, I remember some of the first quotes that came in were really comforting to me. I remember crying as I read these emails that came in. For example, one woman said, in spite of everything, America may be at its greatest today and will be slightly better tomorrow. One theme that we saw emerge again and again from these women was resilience. They had survived so much, they had endured so much, they had experienced so much, and they're still here. There's always hope. There's always another day. So our book is called We the Resilient, Wisdom for America from Women Born Before Suffrage. And it gives voice to people who are not normally heard in our society. I think at a time when a lot of us are looking for hope, a lot of us are looking for perspective and we're looking for some wisdom about how to go on with life, how our country can go on. These women are really providing uh, valuable wisdom for all of us to carry on and to move forward with strength and with perspective.